Second match of the day. Altruistic Armada versus Lakey Eleven Doctor Leviathan. First off for Red Team, we have the Celibate Rage, Gatling Artemis Pyramidian, Banshee and Flare Gun, excuse me, Double Flare Gun on the left side. Their ally is the Queen Anne Zeal, Watch Goldfish, Dual Light Carnids. Their opponents, we have the Fluffy Moth, Watch a Gatling Light Flak on the left side of his Magnate with Carinade uh, Artemis, Watcha on the right, and their ally, the GFA Decidicus, Gatling Watcha, Gatling, and Light Flak, or the Blue Stormbreaker. Both teams charging to center map. We have both teams bringing close to medium range builds, so probably not going to be seeing a lot of cross map sniping. Silver Rage, first ship in the fight to lose armor already. 80% hull going away. Just rebuilt there at the end. Queen Anne's deal has moved in to try to block some damage for their ally. While the Celibate's Rage corrects itself. Now, normally Pyramidian, not normally, I'll say previously, before the last balance patch, Pyramidian would be a good choice against a Magnate. Because if you want to want to, to win that matchup, all you would have to do is fly full speed into the Magnate's balloon. Balloon goes down, they probably die. But now, with the increased mass on the Magnet, that is a far less effective tactic. Meaning, Pyramidian... Oh, Queen Anne's Zeal taking big damage. Meaning, the Pyramidian is just going to be a larger target, a large squishy target, with less firepower than either of the blue ships. So I don't know about this ship choice. In this particular scenario, armor's low, Pyramidian does go down. First point on the board for Lakeia Levodopter Leviathan. And it is a tough call because the newly buffed Magnate is a ship when Anzeal goes down as well. A ship that we have like we haven't played with a lot just yet. We don't know exactly how strong it is since it got its new stats, so teams are still going to be figuring that out. Uh, on the close range map like Periton Rumble, you do have some opportunities for to set up ambushes. Meaning the Pyramidian could maybe get a surprise hit on one of these ships without taking too much damage. We definitely did not see that in the previous fight. Which was pretty open air, lost spots going down early, just no surprises. And I definitely think that Red Team does not want to take an open air fight. To some extent they're probably relying, they bring the Gat Gatling Artemis Pyramid in. Because they're trying to rely on the, the Artemis to... Disable the Magnate. That is one weakness of the ship. Really any ship that utilizes heavy weapons or has a lot of weapons that are clustered together is having that long range AoE disable can be very powerful. But the problem is Fluffy Moth has an Artemis as well. Then Blue Team also has the second bonus Watcha. So in terms of close to medium range disable potential, Blue teams, uh, the ships they've chosen simply outperform that of the Altruistic Armada, so I don't think a, a strategy relying too heavily on that one Artemis. I don't know if that's going to be able to work out for Blue, or excuse me, for Red. Now, Queen Anne Zeal, armor going down, they're forced back, taking 20% perma hull. From the Decidicus, armor down on the Fluffy Moth. Here comes some Artemis shots. Armor's rebuilt. Selvet Rage is moving forward. We might be seeing the first ram of the match as here they come. Boom! Big damn! Oh, huge damage on the Fluffy Moth. Uh-oh, they didn't... Uh-oh, maybe Muse didn't give the Magnate enough mass. It's just, uh, 200, maybe next patch, the Magnate's gonna have 300 mass. And that that did uh, an extreme amount of damage. I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised. And now Decidicus is left on their own. They're trying to moonshine away. One engine's down. Just rebuilt. Not taking too much damage just yet. Selvet Rage going in maybe for another ram. But the angle is not quite right. But it is right for the Queen Anne Seal. Oh no. Corralling them into the building. Not able to get the kill just yet. Now Selvet Rage backing off. Trying to maintain their Gatling arcs. Uh, Decidicus has kind of goofed up this disengagement. 
but it's possible they might be getting still be able to get away. This positioning is pretty good with Queen Anne Zeal in between the Pyramidian and the Stormbreaker, providing them a few seconds of cover. And it does look like they will be able to escape. Unfortunately, they took a lot of damage, so in the next fight, Decidicus will be going in with about 20% perma hull. They're going to have to be very careful with their hull armor, which is a little bit of a problem, because when you see... When you see... Um, sorry, now I'm reading chat messages. Uh, when... <laughs> What was I even saying? When you see these types of comps where it's a fast ship paired with a slow ship, uh, typically it's very important in those situations because the ships are more likely to get split up and dual and a dual focused on. Having low health is a huge liability with these types of team comps because Decidicus in this situation is supposed to be kind of running interference for their ally, but if they're going into a fight with 20% health, Every time their armor goes down, they have to immediately disengage. They have to play very conservatively, which means they can only do so much to protect their ally. Um, and that's going to be a problem. Is now blue and red have switched sides. I think the magnate blue, oh, magnate balloon, not quite visible, but we do get spots going down onto the Sidicus and the Celibate Rage. They're not going to have any surprises here from red. Now, what, uh, what Richard was saying in the chat, which is kind of reiterating what I was saying earlier, is that the, the mass formula largely takes into account, or excuse me, the ram damage, the impact damage formula, takes into account the mass of the ships and also the speed that the ships are moving. And yeah, there is the Sidicus already. This, yeah, going into a fight like this with no health is a huge problem. There goes Pyramidian also. The cannonade shots from the Queen Anne Zeal. Fluffy Moth completely disabled here, but they're playing in blue's spawn. So Decidicus about to mobilize here and move in, and the opportunity for Goldfish to try to get a kill with these light carronades has run out. They're going to be able to disengage, hopefully not t uh, losing their armor in the process. Only kerosene for the red goldfish. They're going to be a little bit slower. Armor's down. They really do not want to take any permanent damage in this uh, disengagement. Oh, hitting the, hitting the terrain. But now Celibate Rage has spawned back in, has already gotten their Gatling guns, engaging on the Fluffy Moth. Blue Magnate's armor is down. Artemis shot one connecting. Not too much damage. Armor's rebuilt. With Queen Anne's zeal moving in close, no doubt. Uh, well, there goes the Pyramidian again. You know what I was talking about at the very beginning of the fight where I said the, the Pyramidian was just a kind of a big vulnerable target with not as much damage as the, the ship's blue team's bringing? Well, every time I look away from the Pyramidian for one second, it dies. But I, feel, I feel like this is validating my... <laughs> validating my statement. As now the Queen Anne Zeal is put into a situation where they have to run away yet again. Zelbert Rage in this uh in this instance has chosen to spawn cross map rather than trying to take a close spawn. Queen Anne Zeal. Hopefully able to escape here. Running underneath the collapsed building. I think Dosidicus might be Trying to pick them up on the opposite side. They're almost boxed into the, the edge of the map, but here comes Celibate Rage. So, 2v1 potentially onto Dosidicus. Watch a lot of that missing as the, the Dosidicus ducks down. Celibate Rage following. Fluffy Moth has gotten totally out of position in their chase on the Queen Anne Zeal. So, here's an opportunity for a kill potentially on the Dosidicus, but we just don't have enough damage coming from Red Team. They're unable to capitalize on the Fluffy Moth's bad positioning. Light flak shots going into the balloon of the Queen Anne Zeal for whatever reason. As now the Fluffy Moth has rejoined the fight, Celibate Rage is blocking them with the rear of their ship. 
unclear what their tactic is going to be here. Seems they're going to continue to focus to the Sidicus for the time being. Artemis Shot's coming out. Stormbreaker taking big damage. 30% health left on the Decidicus. And Fluffy Moth is just trying desperately to regain their altitude so they can support their ally. Another watch of Barrage takes out the front guns of the Pyramidian. Now focusing on the Queen Anne Zeal, they've switched sides so they don't have to wait for the reload. And they're going to have another watcher here potentially in a moment. But Light Flax and Gatling enough to finish off the Queen Anne Zeal, meaning that Lehe Lepidopter Leviathan will be moving into the finals of today's tournament. Altruistic Armada going to the loser's finals. Not the loser's finals, loser's bracket. Let me take a look here. They'll be playing in our round two loser's match.